how to install motor in forward reverse. This is the forward operation. As you can see, the conductor is energized and the motor is rotating in a uh, direction. Upon pressing the stop button, you see the motor st is slowing down the speed. And then when I press the reverse, now the motor will run, but in a different direction. And you can see the reverse conductor is energized as well, but the forward has gone back to the original position. Shukran mali ulipo. Sasa ni kuanguka nayo, moja kwa moja. I'm Trainer Lux, and this is all you need to start on a forward reverse uh, motor installation. So I'll be taking you step by step, but sure. So stay focused and check every step. I hope you have all the material and tools in place. Now let's start step by step. Okay, let's start with the circuit breaker. In this case, I have four pole circuit breaker, and I'm going to install it in faces so i'm starting with my red face then my yellow face and then my blue face don't don't look at the color code because these are motors and i'm using flexible codes but this is what i'm going so i'm transferring the circuit breaker from the equipment board to the terminal board so that now i can continue with the termination in that manner so i'm um, whatever the the slots i'm putting there i'm also considering the slots on the output of the terminal board as you can see there now let's start and then I'm loosening the contactor and then from there I'm going to install it and step by step let's start. So this is for forward as you can see the DOL it will follow that route and then I will install later the reverse and that manner. So pay attention step by step as I do it do on your end and let's learn together from the circuit breaker to the conductor magnetic conductor as you can see the input of magnetic conductor so i'm starting with my red and i'm using red cable for that i'm also using a black cable for for my blue face in this case and i'm using my yellow cable for yellow face so whenever you see black and you can see it has different uh, size different thickness so if you can see that You'll be able to identify that that is now the power circuit. Remember, we are wiring the power circuit where we are allowing power to flow from the consumer unit or the distribution board to the motor direct. So I've wired the first uh, contactor. Now I'm wiring the second conductor. In this case, I will still do the same. So I'll need the live, the three lives. That's the red, yellow, and blue face. Now I'll connect in that order, the same way I uh, connected in the first uh, conductor. All I'm just going to do is after I've connected the second conductor, I'm going to loop it to the first conductor. So remember, you just do the same order, the red to red, the blue to blue, the yellow to yellow in the order that's required, and then do the same to the other end. Because I'm just looping from red from conductor 1 to red in conductor 2, the same way for yellow and the blue. In this case, I've used longer cables, so my work won't be looking tidy, but... Uh, you can do the best on your end. Powered the second conductor as well. Now, what is left is now to have the input from the conductor going to the thermal overload relay. So, for these forward reverse, we only need one thermal overload relay because we are not going to use both six terminals on the motor panel board. So, we are only going to use the three, that is U1, V1, and W1. So, in that case, we'll need... The, the output from the thermal overload relay and remember i said the forward uh, conductor is always installed in your well no matter what even if it's delta connection or star delta connection or forward reverse or the dol itself so we just do it the same way so now what's left is to get the power output from the second conductor that is the reverse con uh, magnetic conductor back to the first conductor that is the forward conductor and then now we can connect the thermal overload relay remember the thermal overload relay i'm using it's uh, detachable so it connects directly to the conductor without cables so that's why i only need the cables for the output the t1 t2 and t3 and i'll follow the same order i followed from the circuit breaker to the first conductor and now to the motor so that one is already done. You can see the motor. You can see all the terminals there. And remember, this one is for practical purposes. It's well labeled out there in the market. You'll get motors in different order. So ensure that you identify using your multimeter. Uh, take continuity to identify the exact uh, input and the output 
terminal on the motor plate. So that one I've identified. Remember, I'll just I will detach. That's why I'm supposed to use flexible flexible cords. But for this case, I want to make it. Remember, there will be a lot of also uh, cables running, but don't get confused. Always follow with my voice. I'll be taking you step by step. Now I'm connecting the output from the second conductor, that is the conductor for reverse. So I'll connect in the order, just red, yellow, and blue in that order. But now when I'm connecting it back to the output of conductor for forward, that's the first conductor, only red and red will go to the same. So line T1 will go to line to T1 on the other side, but I will interchange T2 and T3 respectively. So T1, you can see it going to just to T1. That's the output, I mean, the output one for the forward and the output one for the reverse are connected in the magnetic conductor. But what I will interchange is the output two and output three, I will interchange it from. So from there, when it comes from this point is output two, but it goes to output three, and then the other way is output three going to output two in this end. So that one is interchanging. Once I'm done with that, I've already done now my, mo my, my motor. Uh, in this case, also the six terminal, I'll connect them in delta, delta connection. In delta connection, it means w the connection should form a continuous thing like a triangle. Remember, you can either connect the plates in star or in delta. But for the DOL, we'll connect the motor plates in star, the, the auxiliary plate, the auxiliary terminals. I mean, but in this case, we are connecting them in delta. That's why you, you have seen I've detached the motor. Initially, I had detached it, but now I've run. Now I'm doing what you call dry run. So I'm testing the power circuit if it's okay. That's why you can see just by uh, pushing my the, the coil of the first conductor, I will see it moving in the direction. And then you see I'm pushing the second conductor coil as well to move in that direction. That's what we call dry run. I'm not, I've not yet connected the control circuit. Remember, we cannot be doing manual like that. So that's why we need a control circuit. Now let's start with the control circuit. Remember, we need to energize the control circuit so I can take power from one of the faces in the circuit breaker. Or you can use a single pole circuit breaker to do that from a distribution board. Then now energize the pin 95 of the, of the thermal overload relay. Then from there, pin 96 is the output. Then goes to the normally closed uh, push button that is now the stop button from there that will go to pin one of the stop button then from pin two of the stop button take it to the start button that is start button of the forward reverse remember we have two start buttons we have two normal open push button that is for forward and for reverse so from pin two of the normally closed which is stop button take it to pin three of the start button and in this case I will be taking you all board, but uh, first I will be directing you on how to finish the control circuit for the forward alone. Then we are going to go for the reverse. So now from pin 4 of the start uh, push button for the forward, take it to the normally open. The normally open, as you can see here, I'm using auxiliary pin. So normal open is pin 53 and pin 54. So I'm from pin 4 of the forward push button i'm taking it to normally open then from again from 53 which is normally open i have to loop it to take it to the other side of which is now the normally closed but before that let's take the other part which is now pin 54 we call it the holding pin the other pin of the normally open we call the holding pin if you don't do that you have to take it back to the pin 3 of the uh, start push button if you don't do that it means every time you'll have to hold the pushings no it's like you're doing it manually but for you to do it the right way you put it in holding so that unless i press the stop button my machine will keep on running so i've taken the i've looped the 54 the same way i've looped it to the uh, the normally closed now pin uh, pin 61 remember here i'm using a uh, 61 but uh, remember the codes vary but just know from the normal open of the of the conductor one to the normally closed conductor two, and then the output of normally closed uh, conductor two goes back to a one of the conductor one. Then a two goes to the neutral. 
that's why I had looked neutral, but I had not connected in anywhere. So that's why we are energizing the energy coils of the contactor one. So it's already done. So remember, it has received the A one has received its uh, energy from normally closed uh, auxiliary input from the contactor two. Now let's do the same now for reverse. So the same thing. You have to get it power. So remember the power comes from the stop button. So you loop again from pin 3 of the forward. You loop again to pin 3 of the reverse. That's why you can see three cables. One is for from the stop button. Another one is the holding. The one that came from the output of the normally, uh, normally open, I mean, that pin 60, 54. And then now it's going to pin 3 of the reverse push button so remember even as i'm hold, uh, tightening it i will not tighten it stop because we also have a holding pin for the same for the reverse because if you don't do that again you'll have to press all the time so i'm taking a feeding to the normally open of that same contactor of the reverse conductor and then the output again do the same thing you have done there the output of that contactor goes back to the pin three of now the reverse remember the reverse goes with the second Contact. So it goes to the reverse, as you can see. Yes. So the pin three, and then again you loop now from normally open first pin the way the pin four came from. You go now loop to the normally closed of the other conductor now, which is now the forward uh, conductor. As you can see now, we are taking it to the normally closed pin. And this case is sixty. 1 and sixty two respectively. So from the output of the normally closed auxiliary conductor of, uh, of forward i'm going to feed it to energy coil uh, the energy coil that's a one of the second uh, conductor which is now for the reverse that's why you can see i'm doing now feeding the reverse a one then a two you're going to loop it with the neutral as well you can take the neutral from the other side or you can take the neutral just direct from the a panel board on top but remember the economy of cables is very important while you're doing this so remember i'm taking you guiding you through when you do this you'll have done the right thing now what is left is to us to bring in the indicator remember using an indicator is very important it's a safety factor that you are alerting whoever is coming by or is passing by that the machine is running so in this case we need three indicators but the push button i'm using uh, once with indicator board that's why you can see it has four terminals instead of two terminals but the ones you'll find in the market you might find the one without indicator uh, lamps so in this case i'm not going to have additional indicator lamp but i'm going to use this so in case you are having indicator lamps on the other end then this is what you do so you connect the you get the neutral from either a one of the conductor then loop all the negative terminals connect all the negative terms of the trip the forward and the stop indicator bu uh, buttons together and then as for the stop or the one we call trip you will get it will get its positive uh, its positive from pin 90 96 yeah pin 96 the the output of uh, the TOR, tor the thermal overload relay in that case whenever the stop button is functioning or is ordered it will come on in this case, I've done a mistake. I've just connected it from pin 98, but you'll be using pin 96. Do it pin 96 and you'll see it light. Even if you have an indicator lamp differently, do that. You can use even a bulb, no problem, as far as it works. Remember, the principle is for you to understand it, to be able to practice a lot, and even to be able to do it on your own. That's why Trainer Lux is here for you. So now for the rest, uh, for forward, just loop it to energy coil A1 of the forward and then for the reverse do the same loop the positive of the indicator lamp to the A1 of the reverse conductor in that case you will have done your control circuit with the indicator lamp intact and you can go ahead and test your system that's why you can see whenever I press my push button it lights it lights and the motor runs and you can see when the conductor being energized the way I said I messed with the stop, that's why you can see it's not lighting. But you can see for the reverse, it's giving some light because I've connected.